folks, and welcome to a video lecture on the immune system. Although not listed as one of the 11 systems of the human body, it is quite complex and fascinating to study. Its function is independent of the nervous system and the endocrine systems of the body. Simply stated, it's an animal's protection against pathogens that would cause disease. This video is part one of the immune system in which we'll discuss innate immunity. Part two will discuss adaptive or acquired immunity. A pathogen is an organism that infects another and causes disease. There are a myriad of pathogenic bacteria, viruses, fungi, single-celled proteists, normally referred to as parasites. Fungi are parasites that normally only infect the skin and only get life-threatening if they infect the lungs. Athlete's foot, ringworm, and yeast infections are examples of fungal infections. Proteist parasites can cause some infections you may have heard of, such as amoebic dysentery, malaria, African sleeping sickness, and giardia, which you can catch from drinking non-treated stream water. These are the culprits that can invade our bodies and make us sick. Luckily, for most of us, they rarely kill us. Animals have a way of fighting back. It's called an immune system. And in humans, it's quite a diversified defense system. There are two divisions of the immune system in mammals. The first one is called innate immunity and is nonspecific, meaning that it works in spite of whatever the pathogen is. Innate immunity prevents pathogens from getting into our cells where they can cause infection. It shoots first and asks questions later. Innate immunity involves several layers of defense, and we'll look at each one of them briefly. Barrier defenses are analogous to the moat and walls of a castle. The top layer of skin, called your epidermis, is impenetrable if it's intact. Oil and sweat are chemical defenses with low pH. And your resident flora, which is your own bacteria, actually competes with invading bacteria for space on your body. Mucus secreted by mucous membranes trap pathogens like flypaper. Your mucous membranes line your mouth, respiratory, and digestive tracts. In your respiratory system, cilia can help sweep the dirty mucus out of the body. Saliva and tears have a destructive enzyme called lysozyme, which is another chemical warfare protection. Lysozyme is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Cellular defenses involve specialized white blood cells called phagocytes. These white blood cells have special surface protein receptors that can detect literally thousands of pathogenic compounds called antigens. Some of these receptors, called TLRs for toll-like receptors, bind to specific chemicals. TLR3 binds to double-stranded RNA found in certain viruses. TLR4 binds to lipids found on surfaces of many pathogenic bacteria. TLR5 binds to a bacterial flagella protein. After detecting these pathogens, the phagocytic cell will engulf them, trapping them in a vacuole. That vacuole can then fuse with a lysosome that will destroy it. Four types of phagocytic cells exist in, in the bodies of mammals. Neutrophils flow along in the bloodstream and can roam through infectious tissues. Those are the most numerous types of white blood cells. The free movement out of blood vessels and through tissues to find an infection is called diapedesis. These neutrophils follow a chemical signal put out by the infectious tissue. Macrophages also roam the body, but may be permanently embedded in the tissues of organs such as the spleen and lymph nodes, where the pathogens can get trapped and then destroyed. Eosinophils and dendritic cells stay embedded in tissue. Dendritic cells have low phagocytic activity, but are effective against multicellular invaders like parasitic worms. Natural killer cells, also known as NK cells, also circulate through the body and can detect abnormal surface proteins on cells infected with a virus or cancer cells. NK cells don't phagocytize the infected cell, but rather secrete cytotoxic chemicals 
that trigger the in infected cells, the infected cell destroys itself to save other cells from being infected. Many cellular innate defenses of invertebrates involve the lymphatic system, a network of vessels and nodes that distribute lymph through the body. Lymph is a watery liquid very much like blood plasma. Some macrophages reside in structures called lymph nodes where they engulf pathogens that have flowed from the interstitial fluid into the lymph. Dendritic cells will migrate to lymph nodes after interacting with a pathogen. There, the dendritic cells will sound an alarm of infection by communicating with other immune cells, starting the process of adaptive immunity or acquired immunity, where cells can learn how to attack specific antigens. Cells of mammals that are under attack can also secrete antimicrobial proteins that inhibit the production of the, of the pathogen. This class of proteins are called antimicrobial peptides or proteins. Interferon are proteins that provide innate defense by interfering with viral infections. Virus infected body cells secrete interferons, which induce nearby in uninfected cells to produce substances that inhibit viral infection, as well as signaling macrophages to come to the rescue. Approximately 30 different proteins make up the infection fighting complement system. These proteins circulate in an inactive state and are activated by substances on the surface of many foreign microbes or pathogens. The complement system also functions in the inflammatory response. The swelling and pain that alert you to a splinter under your skin are the result of, a, of local inflammatory response. This is brought about by signaling molecules released upon injury or infection. One important signaling molecule is histamine, which is stored in the granules of mast cells that are found in the connective tissues. Histamine released at sites of damage trigger nearby blood vessels to dilate and become more permeable. Macrophages become activated and perform diapedesis and then attack and destroy the pathogen. Pus, a fluid rich in white blood cells and dead microbes and cell debris, accumulates at the site of inflammation. Macrophages may also release pyrogens, which can cause fever. Vertebrate animals, including humans, are unique in having adaptive immunity in addition to innate immunity. The adaptive response relies on B and T cells, which are types of white blood cells collectively called lymphocytes. Like all blood cells, lymphocytes are made in the red marrow of bone. Some lymphocytes migrate to the thymus gland, an organ in the thoracic cavity just above the heart not to be confused with the thyroid gland located here in the neck. These lymphocytes mature into T cells. Other lymphocytes that remain in the bone marrow develop into B cells. Still other lymphocytes will remain in the blood and become natural killer cells. So I've just introduced you to the second part of the immune system known as active immunity or sometimes known as acquired immunity. That's the topic of part two of the video. You have enough to think about now. If you have any questions, bring them to class, and I hope you've taken some good notes. Till then, be well. Hey, if you're not one of my students, you can still access and print out the note slides for each of my videos if you go to the web address printed above me. If you'd like to contact me, you can make comments to the videos through the YouTube page, or subscribe to the web page above and leave comments. I'd love to help you out if I can.